The beautiful snow-capped mountains and deep voluminous fjords make Norway a top tourist destination for those wanting to witness the picturesque, rugged wilderness. But it's a pain for motorists. There has to be a solution to make everyone's lives easier, so could a radical plan to build a partially subterranean, partially floating superhighway be the answer? To give you an example, the 700-mile trip between Kristiansand in the south of the country up the western coast to Trondheim in the north takes a ludicrous 21 hours of travel by car. That's double what it would take to make a similar journey across the central U.S. Think about that for a second. During this trip, you would have to brave the icy cliffside roads that wind their way up and down the mountain ranges, as well as waiting for no less than seven ferries to take you across the wide expanses of water to the other side of the fjords. The average speed of this trip is a snail-paced 30 miles per hour. There has to be a better way. Turns out, there is. A $40 billion infrastructure project is being cooked up by the Norwegian government's best and brightest engineers and planners. Instead of going over the mountains, motorists would go through them. Instead of ferries, enormous bridges spanning from lakeside to lakeside. And just maybe, a floating tunnel to top it all off. The what? Over 1,600 miles of road have been identified by the Norwegian government to be improved in future infrastructure upgrades. The E39 Coastal Highway Route makes up a little under half of that, crossing six counties and passing through the major cities of Stavanger, Bergen, Alsund, and Modi. The ultimate goal is an E39 without ferries that operates in the same capacity regardless of fair or adverse weather conditions. Travel time is expected to be reduced by half, handy given that a third of Norway's population lives in close proximity to the route. This will be accomplished by essentially turning the currently used route into a redundant scenic route. The new road will be linked by underground tunnels, bridges, and underwater tunnels. The public transport system, as a result, will become more efficient and reliable. The distance between residents and work, hospitals and schools, shortened. Conventional subterranean tunnel and suspension bridge designs will feature for most of the journey. The three suspension bridges planned, while not being the longest in the world, will certainly still be feats of modern engineering. They will have to have the inherent strength to deal with everything the Norwegian stormy winter throws at it. As they say in Norway, there is no bad weather, only inappropriate choices in clothing. The project will feature the world's deepest and longest rocket tunnel drilled through the bedrock and shallow parts of the seabed. It will continue for an amazing 17 miles and at its lowest point will be 1,286 feet deep. Although that may sound like the most ambitious aspect of the development, it doesn't even come close. For the especially long or deep sections of the fjords, a new SFTB, or Submerged Floating Tube Bridge, will be built in parts where bridge building isn't possible, the first of its kind. The term floating is used relatively loosely and describes the neutral buoyancy of the tunnels. They will still be anchored either to floating pontoons or the seabed below. The How The SFTB will play a part in places deeper than 300 feet and wider than 2 miles. In these deep abysses, the seabed is too deep for any traditional rock tunnel. Five of the seven crossings will be made within the tubes. Interestingly, a remarkably similar design was proposed by British naval architect Edward Reed for the English Channel in 1882, but it was voted down. The tubes themselves will be constructed out of conventional steel-reinforced concrete that you would find lining the walls of any modern underground tunnel around the world. They will come in two different sizes, a 30-foot diameter with two lanes and a lay-by or emergency pullover area, and a 40-foot diameter three lanes of traffic wide with no lay-by area. Both sections will have a 16-foot by 16-foot subsection to act as a cycleway, keeping bike riders separate from the faster-traveling automobile traffic. Large semi-trucks will have more than enough room to use the tunnels without issue. The twin tubes will be set out at 120-foot centers, with traffic flowing in only one direction in each. Every 800 feet, the tunnels will be connected by a bridged section, containing fire doors, stairways, and emergency corridors to accommodate the event of an evacuation. It's these solid connections or bridge tubes that will be the anchor points for either the cable tethered to the seafloor below or floating pontoons above. There will also be heavier-duty fail-safe connections to the floating pontoon should the cables fail. 
Conversely, the tunnel is designed to maintain neutral buoyancy even if the cable supporting it either from above or from below becomes dislodged for whatever reason. Huge mechanical ventilation systems will both supply the main tubes with fresh outside air as well as expel the automotive exhaust fumes, just like every other tunnel. The tubes will be positioned 100 feet below the surface as waves and currents are far less powerful at this depth compared to the surface. Interestingly, the force would be less than a tenth of what it would normally be. The Y the Scandinavian people are extremely proud of their pristine alpine environments, and as a result, a huge influence on the design of this project is the requirement to have as small an environmental impact as possible. Cutting travel times in half is all well and good, but there needs to be minimal impact on the surrounding ecosystems and habitats. Currently, the route is extremely dangerous and unpredictable. It's prone to snow, heavy winds, and huge swell, and is often closed in the case of bad weather, leaving citizens stranded. A continuous highway out of the elements that's in operation 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 52 weeks a year, with links between islands through mountains and fjords, will not only make the coastline more accessible for residents, but also for visiting tourists and logistical transportation for goods and produce. The floating tunnel concept also lends itself to the unique terrain in Norway. Some fjords are bordered on both sides by sheer cliff faces and are up to 4,300 feet deep in places. This combination of geological features makes drilling a tunnel and building a bridge very difficult. Bridges in particular need adequate space on the shoreline as well as lake bottom to lay foundations for pylons. The arches and suspensions will need support from below in order to span such a great distance. If done correctly, a concrete tunnel can theoretically go on for as long as it needs to. If the weight and buoyancy are calculated to correctly cancel each other out, the submerged highway could continue on across the body of water 100 feet below the surface without a big, unsightly bridge spoiling the view. This tunnel wouldn't be free-floating either. There are plans to tether it to the fjord bottom with long, specially made cables or up to pontoons at the surface every 800-foot intervals. Ships and boats could even move over the roadway unfettered. Is it safe? In the case of fire, explosion, or any other type of incident, there will be emergency exits and escape routes just like any other tunnel freeway. Environmental loads like waves, ocean currents, and tides, and wind have been accounted for with a 100-year minimum lifespan on the underwater tunnel. This also covers the rare event of an earthquake and subsequent tsunami. Even crazier, the engineers have considered fire and explosions resulting from an attack by submarine, as well as other extremely unlikely events like being caught by a ship's anchor. There are merits and downfalls to either the pontoon design or the cable tether design. The pontoons allow for higher vertical flexibility at the cost of a slightly higher risk of collision from ships. The cable tether option has zero visual impact on the landscape and zero chance of collision. However, there is little allowance for vertical adjustment and movement if it's needed, as well as the relatively unknown soil composition in the deeper parts of the fjords. When can we use it? Though it's still in the developmental and design phase, the Norwegian government is optimistic that traffic will be flowing along as normal in the underwater tunnels in 2050. There's been funding put aside for this mammoth undertaking, though the current estimate of $47 billion has the potential to blow out by as much as 25% by the project's completion. Though it'll likely be the first structure of its kind built in the world, Italy, South Korea, and China have already engaged engineers to design a similar application for crossing the waterways in their respective countries.